the second webinar organized by the IEEE EDS student branch at the University of Dhaka. Uh, I am Dr. Mainu Hussain, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University of Dhaka. And I'm also serving as the, the faculty advisor for the IEEE EDS uh, chapter at University of Dhaka. So uh, it's really uh, an honor and pleasure to have uh, with us today, today, Dr. Yogesh Chohan from IIT, Tik Kanpur. Uh, he's a distinguished uh, EDS lecturer. Uh, and before we get started, uh, let me uh, take a moment to introduce uh, our speaker. So just bear with me for one second. Okay, so uh, Professor Yogesh Sikh Chohan is a professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Kanpur in India. And he was with the Semiconductor Research and Development Center at IBM Bangalore between 2017 to 2010. Uh, and also at the Tokyo Institute of Technology in 2010. He was with the University of California, Berkeley between 2010 and 12 and ST Microelectronics during 2003 and 4. He is the developer of several industry standard models that include the ASM gallium nitride hemp model, VSIM bulk model, VSIM CMG, IMG, VSIM 4, VSIM SY models. Those who are working with uh, device modeling, you guys might be familiar with these models. So. His research group uh, at IIT Kanpur is involved in developing compact models for gallium nitride transistors, FinFET, nanosheet, gate all around, uh, FETs, FDSOI transistors, negative capacitance FETs, 2D FETs, etc. His research interests are characterization, modeling, and simulation of semiconductor devices. Uh, Professor Chohan is the fellow of IEEE. He's the editor of the IEEE transactions on electron devices and a distinguished lecturer of the IEEE EDS Society. He's a member of the IEEE EDS Compact Modeling Committee and fellow of the Indian National Academy of Science. He is the founding chairperson of the IEEE Electron Device Society, Uttar Pradesh chapter, and vice chairperson of IEEE UP section. He has published more than 200 papers in international journals and conference, and uh, those are really so we can papers. stop here you know we can yeah, start. yeah yeah so those are really good papers so uh okay so that's all about uh our speaker so i'll stop here and uh let's get into the talk today it's called the modeling and simulation of negative capacitance transistors so professor chohan uh, yeah so i will switch please. off the video and uh, then start. yeah yeah sure sure Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I will talk about modeling and simulation of negative capacitance transistors. Well, uh, uh, how much time uh, I have? Sorry, you have uh, around 45 minutes and then okay. we will have 15 minutes for question and answer. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I will try to be brief and maybe go fast in some of the cases. Yeah, sure. So sure. this is my group, uh, NanoLab. Uh, currently, I have 27 PhD students with me, uh, 12 PhD have graduated. Uh, we regularly publish uh, in the uh, international journals and conferences. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art characterization lab, which where we are doing all types of DC, capacitance, uh, RF, uh, load pole, uh, noise measurement, etc. So if any of you have devices and would like to characterize, feel free to contact me. Uh, this is just... Uh, to show you the alumnus, uh, alumni we have uh, from NanoLab who are in different places in the industry, postdoc or uh, faculty members in different places. So uh, my lab here works all the way from theory to application. So we are really starting from all the way from materials, doing atomistic simulations, uh, transport, uh, in semiconductors and uh, taking it to the fabrication, device characterization, uh, modeling, and uh, RF circuit design. Uh, my group regularly collaborates uh, with 
uh, international companies and universities. Uh, we are working with almost all the semiconductor companies in the world uh, in the area of especially device modeling or characterization. So just before I go to NC fat or negative capacitance, uh, what is a compact model? So the first one is the compact model. Second one is the luxury which a compact model cannot afford. Uh, so it is very important that the functionality is there, but uh, we don't have uh, luxury of runtime. Uh, so runtime has to be fast. So one difference which you see is that the bottom figure is the TCAD model uh, where you can get a lot of details, uh, insights, uh, but when it comes to compact model, we really talk about the uh, putting the characteristics of function of terminal voltages such that we define like the current and capacitances uh, function of terminal uh, voices. So this compact model is the medium of information exchange uh, from foundry uh, to the circuit designer. A good model should be accurate. That means it should produce trustworthy simulations and it should be simple enough so that parameter extraction is easier. And uh, this balance between accuracy and simplicity, it depends on the end application. So uh, it must guarantee excellent convergence. Uh, simulation time should be as small as possible and accuracy requirements are pretty high that it should match uh, with the measurement or with the TCAD data. So something like 1% RMS error after fitting. And some examples are like VSIM bulk, CMG, IMG. So there is industry standard, uh, standardization body, which is called Compact Model Coalition, CMC. And uh, CMC members include EDA vendors, uh, IDMs, foundries, uh, also this uh, research institutions or consortia. And this is the body which actually make uh, or calls that this is now uh, a model is industry standard. So what are the challenges in compact modeling? Uh, we have to start all the way from materials, understand the material properties, how these change uh, with a uh, function of temperature or bias, etc. And then uh, start the physics, uh, uh, for example, quantum mechanics, transport, uh, then we have to uh, try to come up with uh, clever methods to solve the uh, equations which may not be, for example, differentiable or which may not be integrable and create problems. Uh, so those we have to come up with some uh, nice conditioned equations. And then we have to keep in mind that all these models are for circuit designers. So keep in mind the applications, for example, digital, analog or RF or noise, et cetera. So some snapshots uh, from our recent work. Uh, uh, we are working on all the BSIM models, uh, BSIM bulk, SOI, BSIM 4, CMG, and IMG. All these models are industry standard, uh, and we regularly collaborate with uh, UC Berkeley in developing uh, and release of this model. Uh, this is BSIM HV, the high voltage MOSFET model. Uh, which we have developed and this is now part of uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, BSIM bulk, which is industry standard. Uh, we are working on uh, 2D material transistors. Uh, we are 2D density of states uh, start coming into picture and we have to take care of Fermi direct status and trapping effects are there in these transistors. So this is the model which we developed and published and here are the results shown, including the circuit simulation here, the inverter on the right side shown. Uh, we have been also working on three, five channel transistors, especially for the logic like indium gallium arsenide, but using this material. Uh, so again, here, the quantum confinement effects like the 2D density of states will start coming into picture, uh, which uh, this uh, is there, uh, the, the low loss materials will have quantum capacitance and we start seeing the impact of multiple sub bands here. So that's why you are seeing here uh, the, uh, the, these humps, which are actually coming from 2D density of states. And also uh, these are regular humps, which are there coming from the uh, drain voltage, which we apply. Uh, so this also is visible in IDVD here, but uh, more than that, it's uh, on, uh, in the GM, which you are seeing, and that's the impact of uh, sub-band. Uh, 
then we have worked on the quasi ballistic transport in nanowire transistor so uh, this model is valid for different materials and different geometries etc here again uh, these humps are coming because of uh, 1d density of states where we, you know the how the uh, 1d density of state goes and uh, this is what you are seeing uh, the quantum capacitance versus gate voltage shown here again uh, impact of these uh, sub bands shown here uh, we have also been working on the insulator metal transition uh, material based transistor uh, which uh, is very interesting material and uh, the devices from these so here we worked on uh, modeling of these where you see that it goes uh, it shows that it goes from high resistance state to low resistance state and we have developed the model for the same uh, this is the book which uh, i wrote with the co-authors on bsim cmg model uh, published in 2015 and this is the book which is on the bsim bsim img model for fpsoi transistor uh, published in 2019 Okay. So, if anyone is interested in uh, this CMG model for FinFET or IMG for FDSOI, feel free to check these books. Uh, another uh, thing is which I would like to say is the gallium nitride hemp, a very interesting device, a lot of activity uh, in the uh, research as well as in the industry. Uh, there are a lot of activity which is going on, uh, very nice applications. So, our model is industry standard. And uh, you can look at these and also publications on this. So now just let's go to the NCFET. So we know that power is a big challenge. And uh, if uh, and given that the sub threshold slope, we are not able to reduce. If you want to reduce the VDD, you can skipping the same I on, I off goes up. So that's a big problem. Okay. Uh, so just the definition of sub threshold uh, slope here. Uh, if you see this mathematical expression, what you get is 1 plus C semiconductor into C insulator into 60 millivolt per decade. So what that says is that uh, to get a one decade change in current, you have to apply some certain voltage delta Vg and which we call sub threshold slope. And given that these capacitances which are there are uh, positive, this quantity is greater than one. That means uh, this sub threshold slope cannot be less than 60 millivolt per decade. That is the problem. That's why we have this uh, off current here, right? Now, uh, the definition of capacitance, uh, so you can define it in terms of either inverse curvature of free energy density or the slope of the polarization versus electric field curve. And based on these, you can call, uh, the, there are two types of dielectrics. One is the paraelectric, where there is no polarization when we remove the electric field and the ferroelectric material uh, where there are two possible states of polarization when electric field is removed. So uh, from this, what we are seeing that uh, a positive capacitor when we normally, which we talk about the charge voltage relation is like this. That means uh, if you see the energy versus charge, there is this upward parabola. Uh, if uh, there is a negative capacitance, then there is this inverted parabola and such characteristics is, uh, are there in the uh, ferroelectric material. So this is the reason where you see that uh, the capacitance of this will be negative. Okay. So uh, this paper, which again, uh, you should be proud, came from Saif Salahuddin, who is a viewer pass out. And in 2008, he, he published this paper where uh, he said, uh, what if we have a negative capacitance? So if C insulator, we make it negative, then we can see that this factor is less than one and we can have sub threshold slope uh, less than 60 millivolt per decade. And this is uh, there in this ferroelectric material. But note that this is the uh, uh, energy curve where you see that this is the maxima, so that's unstable state. Okay. Uh, so this is what the PE curve will look like uh, for a normal paraelectric uh, material where when we remove electric field, uh, there is no polarization. So that's why you are seeing here this. Uh, in case of uh, ferroelectric material, uh, there are two possible states of polarization uh, giving you this hysteresis. So uh, this is a famous and uh, hysteresis curve, which is there in all ferroelectric materials, right? Uh, the PE curve. Uh, and this origin of this paraelectricity 
uh, is that uh, in case of paraelectric, there is a central symmetry of this atom, but in case of uh, ferroelectric material, it's not central symmetric. So that's why this atom, uh, depending on the electric field, will be either in this state or in this state. And that's why we start getting the uh, two states uh, in the peaker. So uh, this, uh, which both are same, one is the G versus P, another one is P versus E. Uh, what you are seeing that uh, if we are coming from this side, it goes up, it, we are, it goes up. So we actually don't enter in this one uh, because it's unstable state. So there is this model which is called landau kolotnikov theory for nonlinear dielectric, and here the energy, free energy, is expressed function of polarization. And uh, uh, in general, these alpha and beta can be positive but uh, negative, but gamma is always positive. Uh, dynamics you can define by delta, this dp by dt, and then in the steady state uh, analysis we can say that we can put this to zero. So from there. Uh, from this, you will get this relation, which is the, between the electric field and the polarization. And uh, you can do the further analysis for two cases. Here, one is that for alpha greater than zero at equal to zero, there will be only one real root, which is the, for the paraelectric material P equal to zero. Uh, for negative alpha at equal to zero, there will be three roots. And uh, two roots are plus minus PR, which we talked about, uh, to, uh, in the PE curve, and another one is this P equal to zero, which is, comes, uh, which is we are didn't see because of the instability. So uh, uh, then we can have you know same uh, more details again same mathematics. I'm just going here that this is the one which we are talking about the this one zero, uh, but it is falling in the unstable region. Uh, so. Uh, this one, which is this red one, is of interest to us, which is showing the negative slope. That means it is, uh, it is, it will give you a negative capacitance. But uh, it is falling in the unstable region. So normally, if you are doing the measurements of a ferroelectric, you will see it will come like this. Then you will get this, and if it will, it will go like that. Right. So normally, you will not see this region of negative uh, slope. Uh, uh, because of the unstable region. So you may have, it is, have to do something so that you can get or use this thing, negative capacitance. And if we apply the electric field, uh, this is how it is shown that, uh, how it will move uh, from one state to another, uh, showing here that, you know, you, it will come like this, and then it will jump here. If you come this way, then it will jump here. So you will only see the hysteresis. How to stabilize? Uh, coming, uh, this is the paper which came from Asif Khan. Again, the viewer pass out. Uh, we can add a positive dielectric uh, capacitance in series uh, with this ferroelectric so that total free energy of system has a minima in the negative capacitance region, right? So this is what we are seeing here. And if you do the math uh, for this, what the condition will be that C total must be positive for this. And that means from this, that your modulus of ferroelectric capacitance should be greater than the dielectric capacitance, which we are adding here in the series, so that the total capacitance remains positive. Uh, uh, so this negative capacitance, uh, we got the condition that this has to be greater than zero. That means your ferroelectric capacitance must be greater than whatever you are adding series. For example, here I'm writing here the semiconductor capacitance. So depends So whatever you add in the series uh, 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 to the ferroelectric, uh, this CFE mod should be greater than the uh, semiconductor capacitance. Uh, yeah, so same thing. Uh, so this has been uh, also observed uh, experimentally that the total capacitance, we know that if there are two capacitances in series, uh, total capacitance will be less than individual uh, capacitance, but in case in this case, if one is CFE and other one is CDE, uh, the capacitance total capacitance is greater than the CDE. That means this is the signature of the negative capacitance which we can see experimentally. And then there have been a lot of other uh, reports experimentally. This was again Asif's paper uh, where they did uh, measurements and found that first. Uh, short time they were able to demonstrate 
uh, in the salt region. Uh, this was another demonstration of first time uh, S curve uh, where they were showing that uh, they were able to do the measurements and were all able to opt obtain this double well uh, energy curve through measurements. And this was the measurement strategy where they measured, uh, they applied voltage versus time, measured the current versus time, uh, obtained from that the charge versus time, and from that they extrapolated these figures here and to see that the, you actually can get the S curve. And then uh, not just capacitors, uh, also this was demonstrated uh, for transistors. Uh, so this is here, there, there were several demonstrations uh, around 2015 or so. And this was uh, one of the first papers showing uh, uh, hafnium zirconium oxide ferroelectric and this was very interesting because HFO2 is already used high dielectric in the uh, in the semiconductor industry. So this one is or can be a, a very much compatible with the CMOS. Uh, so that's that was very interesting paper demonstrated first time. So in literature, there are two types of straight structures for NCFET. Uh, one is where you actually are adding this ferroelectric capacitor. Uh, in series with this MOSFET. Okay. So that's the MFMIS. So this is M, F, M, and then I, and then S. Okay. So this is a very simple structure, easy to understand, analyze, and also the uh, early demonstrations were actually using the MFMIS transistor. Uh, the other one is uh, where the ferroelectric is put directly on top of insulator. So this is MFIS. So this is structure is uh, compact. Uh, there is uh, no metal inside uh, between these ferroelectric and dielectric, and th that is also not needed. And this is what the realistic structure will be if this technology is brought in production. So uh, when we started looking into understanding of these NCFET, how they will operate, how will the characteristic look like, uh, we first started with this MFMIS, the reason being, as I said, it's very easy. Uh, we have the MOSFET, this one, and we add a ferroelectric in series. So uh, this is how it is, a FinFET with the metal uh, here inside, and then we can easily analyze this as separate, this as separate, and connect these. So this internal metal gate provides surface uh, with a specially constant V int. So this V int is, uh, which is this one metal is constant, uh, the voltage on this internal metal V in. And uh, the ferroelectric and the baseline, we can actually consider them as two separate quantities and uh, that will help in simplified modeling. So this is what we did. Uh, we actually separated these two and uh, modeled this separately and this separately, uh, two quantities and connected them in uh, uh, together in very logy. So first we uh, experimentally calibrated the Landau parameters uh, where alpha, beta, and uh, these ones uh, we calibrated using this major data shown here. And uh, that gives us the alpha and beta parameters. Uh, then we calibrated the FinFET model, BSIM CNG, uh, using this 22 nanometer node Intel data. So that gave us the parameters for BSIM CMG model. And then we combined these uh, two Verilog A codes together. And note that Landau uh, model, you need this uh, gate charge. So then we actually pass this charge also uh, in this. Uh, Landau model direct, uh, you know, from the Verilog A code in the BSIM CMG. Uh, then there is a V int, uh, which is there uh, on one side. And note that this is a ferroelectric. On one side, you have gate voltage. Another one, other side is you have, you have a V int. Okay. And this is then self-consistently cons solved in SPICE. And uh, SPICE will solve it without any problem. And then you can analyze the characteristics. Okay. So this is uh, all the equations. Uh, one interesting quantity is what we call it internal voltage gain, uh, del V int by del V G. That means what is the change in V int when we apply the gate voltage uh, V G, uh, which is equal to mod C F E by mod C F E minus C int. So what it says so, so that uh, if we have a very good matching between this 
uh, C inc, uh, which is the capacitance looking this side and the CFE, then we will have a very large gain. So then we first look into the capacitance, uh, note that this is charge versus capacitance curve, but uh, this one is actually, you can see the CGG, right? This is your CGG here. And you can imagine, the, you know, a charge when we, so this is your threshold voltage point VTH, you increase gate voltage charges in VG, right? So you can also say that this is VG uh, for, at least for the CGG versus VGT, and this is your gate capacitance CGG. And this one is your uh, ferroelectric capacitance, which has nonlinear behavior, function of charge. And uh, that tells us that if this matching is, so if you see this curve is far, giving you a lesser voltage gain, uh, this red curve is near to this pink line. That's why you have better matching and you get a larger voltage gain. So this one is what you are seeing on this, sun, this side, uh, giving you a larger voltage gain. And it's a function of uh, uh, drain voltage also because we know both of these capacitances uh, will change uh, because of the uh, drain voltage. Okay, so this capacitance matching increases with TFE, which increases the gain. Uh, but if you further increase the TFE ferroelectric, this comes in this region where you start seeing the instability, okay. and that increase in VD reduces the capacitance matching because you know for larger drain voltage the uh, it will be something like this right this is for large vds okay. so then you will have disturb the capacitance matching and that will reduce the gain and also reduces the width of this hysteresis window uh idvg characteristics uh if we want this to analyze here so first uh, let's focus on the uh, sub threshold part here you can see this TFE equal to zero is nothing but a simple fin fed. That means no ferroelectric. Okay. And as we increase the TFE, you can see that uh, subthreshold uh, slope or swing is improving. But if we continue to increase TFE for 14 nanometer, we see we start seeing hysteresis because now the criteria which we were talking about that uh, uh, C total should be greater than zero is not being followed. And that's why we see that this one shows his taxes. Okay. Uh, other, uh, the same which we are plotting here, you can also see here that as we increase the DFE, you can see that uh, subthreshold uh, slope uh, swing, which is millivolt per decade, uh, swing less than 60 millivolt per decade, we are able to get that, right? Uh, then we have here, uh, on region characteristics. So now let's focus on the linear uh, plot, this one. Uh, here you see this is for normal FinFET uh, baseline. And then as we increase the TFE, the on current is improving. And again, this is the unstable uh, because of the uh, uh, mismatch in capacitance. Uh, gain, you can see here, AV defined here, as the capacitance matching improves, we start seeing uh, larger on current, right? As gain increases, on current also increases. So that's really a significant improvement in on current or uh, uh, even if you are not that much uh, happy with us, that much improvement in substitute swing, uh, but again, this one is on log scale, this is on linear scale. So both are really improving. And this has been experimentally demonstrated uh, in several papers, uh, you know, 33 millivolt per decade, et cetera. So there have been a lot of papers showing you uh, much better characteristics than 60 millivolt per decade. Then let's go to the uh, IDVD. So in IDVD, what is interesting to see here is that uh, the drain current increases and then it goes down. And note that this going down is not because of self-heating. Uh, self-heating is uh, famous uh, for degrading the IDVD characteristics at high VD, but it's not because of that. This is because uh, of you know increase in VDS is actually decreasing the gate charge which in turn is decreasing the uh, voltage gain. So this is, uh, you can also see the V int versus VD. You can see the V int is decreasing as you increase the drain voltage. And that V int is nothing but the internal gate voltage, which is applied to the transistor. So the current is decreasing. And uh, again, these are some of the papers so showing you experimental demonstration of uh, uh, NC-FET here. And 
and there have been lot more demonstrations uh, uh, now uh, using different materials etc uh, i have just cited some of these uh, another interesting property which you see is the negative dibble so drain induced barrier lowering we know is famous for uh, decreasing threshold voltage if you plot this idvg the dibble means you have a decrease in this for as you increase the vds this is ids uh, vgs term in this case actually it's other way around that threshold voltage actually increases as we are increasing the vds so this is why we are saying the negative dibble so if we plot this dibble versus uh, tfe you can see uh, it it starts at some point let's say when tfe is zero and then it goes down as we increase the tf so that's very interesting that means your off current actually is decreasing because of the uh, this uh, nc effect okay. so we still got higher ion which we saw in last slide and lower ion what is better than that that you are really solving both problems of off current as well as on current and this negative dibble uh, also sometimes called drain induced barrier rising effect uh, we have also done uh, even uh, the 2d simulations and we see that as we are increasing this is the increase in vds right uh, there is this in increase in barrier height and that's why we are seeing the increase in the threshold voltage <clears throat> and then uh, this is just to say what happens with the high vds uh, so this width of hysteresis at larger thicknesses will change due to vd and uh, also the vd will also decide the matching of capacitance so uh, that is another uh, thing which we have to keep in mind <clears throat> uh, originating from this decrease uh, in the uh, current versus vd is if you see the gds there is this negative differential resistance ndr effect so that is uh, as i already explained why there is a decrease and that is giving you this negative gds uh, another interesting thing which we saw also here is that even oid vd curve you start seeing these hysteresis again all this uh, you can explain the uh, uh, how the capacitance matching is how the c total is versus vd all that you will uh, you can explain from there and this has been also even Uh, explain uh, uh, soon uh, uh, experimentally this negative differential resistance. So you can see the decrease in this current, and also these some other curves here showing these curves, these curves. All these are showing the uh, NDR effect. So uh, the device which we started was this red curve, which was the reference fin fit. Uh, the what we are able to get using the NC effect is that this. Uh, let's just say vdd equal to 0.8 volt so you have improved on current and improved off current so now we have same ion as 22 nanometer if you talk about for this if this is same on current then you can reduce the vdd by half right so that's really huge improvement in power and still you can get the off current reduction by 83% so this is the promise of uh, negative capacitance transistor uh then we have done the analysis using what happens when the ferroelectric parameters are varied uh we see that the low pr high ec uh, it reduces the cfe which leads to improved matching uh but then uh, you also will see low substitution swing uh increase in on current but reduce uh, off current so you can get the high i on by i Uh, we also analyze the delay uh, here so if you are seeing if the nc fin fit drives nc fin fit uh, then the on current advantage uh, gets limited because you have a large amount of delta qg so what i am talking about is like this you have a circuit uh, and then uh, it is charging this circuit right this one so since the we know that c total increases right the gate capacitance increases uh, in case of nc fed so you have to provide large qg to charge this capacitor right of the second stage right that one okay. uh so uh, the best is that if nc fed drives fed 
uh, load, then it really is good because then it will have uh, less, it will require less gate charge. Uh, we also this this uh, PDP analysis and EDP analysis, etc. And uh, again, we find that best is that NC FinFET driving the FinFET load. Then we have worked on this uh, modeling of uh, MFIS. Now note that till now we were working on MFMIS. So then we started this MFIS NC FET and here uh, there is no metal. So now what do you see this V in, which is the voltage, let's say here on top of the oxide. This is actually varying from source to drain to this side because of the uh, drain voltage. So the polarization and internal voltage will be varying, especially in longitudinal direction, right? In this direction. And uh, having, having said that this device, which is an MFIS has better stability with respect to this uh, leaky ferroelectric. And uh, you can read the paper from again, ASIP on this uh, leaky ferroelectric. But then in terms of modeling, there are challenges here because now we have a lot of implicit equations which require tedious numerical solution. So then we worked on explicit modeling of this charge. Uh, I'm not going through all these equations. Feel free to look into these papers, uh, but we go through these, come up with a, a model which is, doesn't require iteration. And this is what you are seeing, the gate charge and cap gate capacitance. And remember, uh, just to point out, this is what I was talking about, the increased gate capacitance, right? Which is coming because of the amplification effect, right? And that was creating the problem I was talking about charging of this gate, right? It requires. So this is the uh, increase in gate capacitance. And then we have validated the model against full implicit calculations here. And you can see compared to baseline, you have a better current here. And also uh, you start seeing these humps, which are again coming up because of, as I said, the gain plot you have, right? And this is the model validation against experimental data. Then we compared the MFIS versus MFMIS. And uh, uh, here we are seeing that, uh, you know, you can see these how ion versus PR and VG, all these are there. The interesting is this one where you see the hysteresis in case of MFIS, we have a much smoother hysteresis. That's because the domains are switching one by one in case of MFIS versus MFIS where all these domains in the ferroelectric here will switch together, okay? So this is why we see the smooth hysteresis in MFIS case. Then we have also worked on this uh, gate all around NC FET uh, shown here. Again, uh, uh, a lot of implicit equations, we need to come up with a uh, some solution which will uh, avoid this implicit solution. Uh, so then we solved these, came up with the uh, explicit solution and validated it with the measurement data. And you start seeing same uh, validation here shown, very good matching, improved on current, as I showed, uh, humps in GM coming from these gain plots, etc. Uh, then these are terminal charges. We also validated the charges and the capacitance, gate capacitance, etc. all these plots and versus both VG and VD. Uh, then we did an exercise. Again, all these are when there were not that many papers in this area at all. So we uh, worked on this. What will be the difference between MFMIS versus MFIS? At that time, note that TCAD which now you can do in Centaurus that was not supporting the, uh, uh, this Landau model. So we were not able to analyze this NC effect uh, or NC effect we were not able to do in TCAD. So then what we did, we did it using a SPICE model. This is your MFMIS, which we already discussed, right? How to model. For MFIS, where you have variation of V int uh, all the way from source to drain. So what we did, we partitioned this like N number of units. And each one you can consider as MFMIS. And then we did this trick, used this trick to simulate this uh, MFIS. So this was, uh, uh, you know, we did this especially, if, uh, we considered the long channel transistor. And what we found that MFIS always gives here better results. The reason being 
again, the, all the dipoles uh, are switching together uh, uh, and uh, compared to MFIS case. Uh, and here we are seeing that, uh, for example, here, the uh, smoothness is there much more in MFIS case versus MFMIS case. And these are, you know, you can go through the explanation and find why there are different trends with the remnant polarization, etc. And then we also analyze the hysteresis behavior. So you can again see the what I was talking about, uh, very smooth hysteresis in MFIS because of the switching, uh, uh, you know, one by one switching of the dipoles compared to the MFMIS case. And you also see this uh, uh, hysteresis, which are which is a function of channel potential. Uh, uh, then we also did the short channel effects analysis, uh, MFMIS versus MFIS case. Uh, and again, this is, I'm talking about at that time, TCAD was not supporting at all. So we actually did our own 2D numerical simulation in COMSOL. And we did, uh, we included the Landau model and the MOSFET model together here and analyzed it using TCAD. So what is interesting, we find that uh, in normal transistor, you have this roll-off, threshold voltage roll-off. In case of uh, 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 negative capacitance transistor, actually, you see this roll-off. Uh, uh, so it's opposite behavior here. Of course, at some point, you start seeing roll-off, which is coming from the conventional short channel effects. Okay? And same trend you also see in SS versus length. Uh, in normal transistor, you see rise in sub-threshold uh, swing. But here, we see that there is a decrease. So NC FET exhibits, uh, this is exhibiting a uh, reverse trend in VT and SS with the scaling. And the, this uh, was because we, then we looked into the details and we were finding that there is this inner fringing capacitance uh, field, which is causing this. And that's why you see there is this uh, humps here near source and drain which are coming from the inner fringing capacitance, okay? So there is a fringing capacitance here, inner fringing, this one, okay? And this hump is not visible in MF, MIS because, you know, there is a metal, uh, internal metal, which is not going to, uh, which will make sure that the voltage is constant all over the gate voltage. Uh, so that's why you don't see, but the trend is similar that as you decrease channel length, you see the increase in the barrier height. And uh, this is reverse SF trend. You can explain it uh, using mathematically what we find that how this is, uh, you know, why these trends are coming. And then we also analyze the spacer permittivity impact, how these will change uh, VT. And again, the inner fringing gets enhanced. So you will have a, a VT trend and double trends getting uh, better and better uh, for you know, uh, especially this is more in MFMIS compared to MFIS. Uh, we also analyze the off region characteristics and again, uh, how the VT is changing. So again, uh, the, what is important, you see this increase in the barrier height uh, and that is, uh, is still there compared to the long channel uh, or if we decrease the channel length and that's why we are seeing that double versus length, also we see that it gets better and better. So really, all the characteristics improve as we are uh, going to the shorter channel and devices. And then we also analyze the impact of source drain doping, where you can see that uh, as we are increasing this uh, uh, source drain doping, the fringing improved, and that's why you have a barrier height uh, increase in barrier height. Uh, and then we were able to uh, examine in more detail by potential and field distribution, uh, and we were able to justify that these trends are real uh, in NCFET devices. Okay. Uh, so let me see, I will uh, skip this. Uh, this is impact of ferroelectric thickness. Here you can see that for five nanometer versus three nanometer, uh, uh, MFIS is here giving better compared to the MFMIS, but then MFMIS is seeing a larger NDR effect here, again, because of the simultaneous switching of the, uh, of the dipoles. 
and then uh, we uh, this is just uh, this slide shows that uh, this is not just a theoretical study uh, global foundries demonstrated uh, negative capacitance fin fed in on on uh, in their 14 nanometer technology and they also showed that uh, the ring oscillator working ring oscillators even up to you know 40 gigahertz or so so this is really a very promising uh, technology uh, we have worked on uh, circuits also so this is nc fin fed based in water uh, very interesting because of this because of this ndr effect you start seeing hysteresis in the vtc curve of inverter okay. uh, we also worked on sram i'm just skipping uh, here and then we uh, analyzed that how the impact uh, this nc fed have on future processor design uh, here what we are showing what will be the frequency increase due to nc fed if we have a same voltage constraint so you can still see that frequency can be improved by large amount especially for larger ferroelectric thickness uh, the second one is what is the frequency increase if we have same power density constraint so this is the power density then also again we see improvement and what's the minimum operating voltage with the achieved power reduction uh, under same performance that means frame frequency so this third one is what you are saying for same uh, performance constraint you can still see that we can reduce the power so it it is really beating the uh, baseline uh, transistor uh, in all these constraints uh, we have also worked on the high frequency performance uh, these are shown some of the results here and we get uh, again we also see improvement in the rf performance uh, we also worked on uh, process variations here and uh, we see uh, we, in this we included the variability in all these parameters here shown here uh, and the ion improvement we were able to uh, see non monotonic trend and uh, i of was decreasing monotonically and vt also decreased monotonically uh, so recently uh, some uh, very interesting work which we have published is the variability analysis in the so multi granular grains are always there in ferroelectric right and so these are the grains here we did this analysis so where we first come up with a model in matlab and uh, this is what is shown here how the distribution of grains uh, with gra grain area follow so they, this is a gamma distribution and then we used this uh, coupled it with the ticket simulation and this is what the uh, different you know results are in ticket uh, first one is the 3d distribution of pr where we assume that it's uh, either linearly increasing or decreasing profile how it is Uh, affecting different grains and here we are also showing uh, this uh, distribution of pr uh, for uh, different uh, you know linearly increasing and decreasing profiles and how this is going to affect the hysteresis curve so this is the variability in p loop uh, for this surface area and uh, linearly increasing linearly decreasing profiles okay. uh, we also checked what if some of these grains are dielectric so if we increase the percentage of dielectric grains then you can see this hysteresis loop is actually uh, vanishing uh, decreasing and vanishing uh, when the uh, dielectric content increases okay uh, we have also done uh, what is called the multi domain behavior uh, so here different domains uh, will have different characteristics and switching Uh, so this we have done uh, in a spice model this paper has just been uh, published and this we have done uh, the reason for using a spice model it's very easy to implement and analyze this thing so uh, with this uh, spice model uh, we are actually doing it like this connecting all these transistors in series and parallel each one representing uh, one domain and then a uh, lot of interesting observations are there uh, one is that unlike the mono domain case switching of these individual domains in multi domain happens at different interval of gate voltage right and this switching depends on their uh, internal domain parameters and the amplification effect due to nc gets lowered in multi domain uh, uh, lower drain current is there there is even a kink in drain current here so uh, in this and also here and uh, the region being one of the domains actually does not satisfy the stability criteria 
which is there for this ferroelectric and that's why we start seeing the kinks in IDVG and GM. Then we have also analyzed the drain extended MOSFET uh, for high voltage switching and analog applications. Uh, here again, uh, so what we are seeing the, in this case that uh, if we just have the IDVG and in, so there is this increase in current and also change in threshold voltage and that is giving us this increase in on current and off current. Uh, but what we see interesting is that the on resistance actually uh, versus VG, uh, you can see for larger ferroelectric thickness, it is decreasing. So that's what the promise is that how the R on versus TFE, uh, this is promising application. And also uh, uh, one side effect is that the break, the breakdown actually decreases. So that's undesired, but it's not that bad compared to the decrease in the on resistance. And then we have also worked on the NCFDSOI modeling. Uh, I'm not showing any equation, but this is what you are seeing, the negative differential resistance uh, uh, being shown here coming from the NC effect. And this is the experimental validation. We also did the circuit simulation here, shown the ring oscillator and how delay versus VDD is. And you can see here, the 7x improvement compared to the baseline. So this is baseline and, and this is your NC effect. So uh, that's it. Uh, I'm just putting some open questions, which are, uh, you know, you can take up as a research topic. Is NC a static or transient phenomenon? Uh, how can you physically explain NC effect? Uh, I still don't have a good answer. Uh, I think this is something which we should work on. Uh, what's the impact of second order effects? I already showed you some of it, some results which we have published. Impact of brain boundaries, their sizes, multi-domain effect, traps effect, ferroelectric thickness along with traps, and also reliability, uh, which we also have published a little bit. And then how the NDR or negative debil will impact the circuits. <clears throat> so conclusion, uh, ion by IOF is the challenge in the new technology nodes. NC FET actually addresses that. It's one of the best choice. Uh, there is a very good material, which is hafnium zirconium oxide uh, uh, compatible with the CMOS. Uh, integration is still a challenge, but there has been a lot of progress in this. Uh, our SPICE models are there for circuit simulation. And uh, let's see if industry adopts this technology. And then I have here added uh, publications so you can uh, look into these publications uh, and we have done a lot of papers uh, in this area so that's it from my side thank you uh, thank you so much professor chohan i think it was a great presentation and i hope the students learned a lot actually and personally uh, my research group here at the university of dhaka we are also working on mcfets and we have been following your work heavily for the past few years or so. Uh, so it was a great, uh, I mean, learning experience for us. And it helped us to start uh, our research on NCFETs. So, yeah, I, I saw some papers from your group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll take some questions uh, here. Uh, so I would like the students to uh, unmute yourself and ask any questions. Anyone from the audience? Any questions? We have a few questions in the chat box. I'll come to that. But if anyone wants to ask uh, uh, questions in person, or uh, you are most welcome. No? OK, so let me take the question from the chat box then. And then I'll get back to you again. Uh, so we have uh, a question. So. Paimul, do you want to speak or just? Uh... Uh, sorry, you can read out it uh, okay. so that yeah. it will help. Yeah, okay. Okay, Thank so, you. yeah, sure. So, uh, Paimul uh, has some questions on uh, NCFS. So, let me read out. The first one is uh, that as we have seen for single domain case, we can apply 1D LK equation explicitly, which is explicitly defined in the literature. for. But for multi-domain case, is there any sort of explicit equation or how we can simulate multi-domain effect? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, 
So first answer, the straight answer is no. There is no the LK equation is for uh, actually uh, monodomain. So multi-domain uh, one you have seen just now uh, how we did is uh, so uh, for multi-domain. There are few papers on uh, I forgot this name, but which I was just showing that paper how to include that uh, multi-domain. So there have been some, but I would say that multi-domain uh, simulations. It's still a lot of scope to work on. Okay. Uh, then there's the next and, question. And also, yeah. we are also working on, I don't want to reveal those things, uh, but uh, we are also working on this heavily. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we'll go to the next question again from Fahimur. He's asking about some sensor devices like SFET, Ed, where we can use the NC effect Ed, for high voltage sensitivity apart from current sensitivity. So can you comment a little bit on using uh, NC effect as a sensing device? I, I think I saw one of your papers in yes. IEEE okay. sensor, right? Uh, no, it was in uh, this, uh, uh, I, I would like to point out this paper, which was there in uh, APL. Uh, this was published with Adrian Inescu group. Uh, mm -hmm. where we actually published both experimental and the theoretical analysis of uh, IS FET using NC effect. So I suggest you to look into that paper. Yes, we get okay. better. Okay. okay, yeah. So that is also another promising area, I think, for sensing devices, yeah. yeah. Okay, last one. Uh, what is the future of ferroelectric semiconductor? For example, like indium selenide as a channel material. Can we simulate that in, uh, for example, ticket like Silvaco ticket, or do you have any ongoing research on that, like ferroelectric semiconductors like indium selenide? So I'm not sure why are you really particular about indium selenide, but uh, uh, we are looking into different materials, uh, uh, ferroelectric semiconductors, uh, especially 2D semiconductors. We are looking into it that uh, they are. They, they show good results and, and we, we are actually working uh, in that topic, uh, 2D ferroelectric uh, semiconductors. Uh, simulation in TCAD, uh, I don't know actually uh, which material you can include uh, in, in this. I, I think in my, if I remember correctly, that TCAD is just, uh, uh, you if you know alpha and beta parameters, uh, it will just do the simulation for you. So TCAD doesn't care that much about model, it is all about the parameters we have to provide. Right. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Johan. Uh, okay, we have another question. Uh, this is from Mahmoud Hussain. Uh, he wants to know, uh, I would like to know the effect of increasing temperature and its in impact on substration swing and debug. Uh, yeah. On and can we able to get uh, less than 60 millivolt sub threshold uh, at higher temperatures? I think that's what he means. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here, uh, my answer is that note that uh, this Curie temperature uh, is, I think, if I remember somewhere, depend, it, it varies, but somewhere around, I think, uh, 60 or 80 degrees Celsius or so for some of the ferroelectrics. So then you will start losing the ferroelectric property. It will behave like a normal dielectric. So then you will get the characteristics according uh, to the normal transistor. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, anything else from the audience? Any more questions? I, I will pass you the slides uh, so that, you know, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. feel free to pass it to students also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That would be really helpful. If not, then uh, I, I have a couple of questions. Sure. If, yeah. Okay. So you said about like uh, for modeling MFIS is a little bit challenging because a lot of uh, implicit equations are involved. Uh, so we have uh, like very well-known commercial device simulation tools like Centaurus and Silvaco. Is there anything that they're doing about this? Like uh, they're implementing some mechanism to actually uh, I mean, simplify this uh, uh, process of using implicit equations. So. You don't need to worry that uh, in uh, in the TCAD simulator because TCAD is solving the uh, 
all these equations uh, self consistently right. uh, at a different uh, grid points so that problem is not there in tcat it's the problem in the spice simulation in the spice simulation right okay okay and the another question i have is uh, regarding like this more like a general questions regarding modeling and simulations so sometimes we get this view from uh, experimentalists like that uh, they seem to be little skeptic about uh, studies based solely on modeling of course we know that these days modeling goes hand in hand with experiments models are always calibrated and validated against experimental data but sometimes we get this perception that okay uh, they are little bit skeptic about uh, uh, pure simulation results sometimes so can you make some comment on that or what do you what do you say about that so so even i i will also be skeptical uh, unless it is validated with the experiment or uh, the results are calibrated initially and then let's say you can extrapolate right uh, we must have some either some experimental or solid physics uh, you know uh, the, the backing the reason they are skeptical always in modeling and simulation is that approximation we always mm -hmm. simplify we always approximate so right all people want to see whether whatever you have done at the end are you getting something uh, good or it's a garbage right yeah yeah exactly yeah. right okay that's all i have from my side so uh, anything else from the audience anyone okay so yeah i think that should be it so uh, okay there's one more questions in the chat box okay we'll take this one probably the last question uh, as we increase the temperature we'll be losing performance uh, in that case can we replace uh the metal of nc fed with multilayer polysilicon so yeah i i i don't have direct answer i i don't know what so polysilicon uh what will it help in i don't i don't understand yeah yeah even even i i really don't get yeah so if yeah, mahmud if you are online you can maybe explain it to us clearly okay okay or, or you can discuss with uh, dr hussain first and then maybe if there right. right 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 yeah, it's not clear to me either okay so uh, we want to thank you again professor chuan for giving us time uh, we have a small token of appreciation for you is just a virtual thing thank so i would request our eds uh, chair i mean mohammad aminul haq uh to please present this token to our speaker aminu thank you uh, anyway thanks for uh, organizing this event also so uh, we will email it to you you and we wish we could give it to you in person but that's not possible here yeah. and but that's all we can do virtually yeah but, thanks thanks from my side really appreciate it yeah so thank you so much so with that thanks a lot thank you with Bye. with thank you yeah so with that i would like to thank all our participants and also our speaker and his group is doing excellent work they are also organizing some training sessions so i would actually ask you to uh, keep an eye on his website maybe if the pandemic situation is off we can all visit iit kanpur sometime yeah Definitely. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.